Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Uh, I don't know what to call this. I'm just going to throw some things out there and uh, try to try to help everybody think about what's going on. Now, understand something. The Lord created everything good, including the uh, Lucifer who became Satan and the devil. I don't know if Lucifer is his actual name, but uh, it means light bearer. And it has angel uh, reference to, uh, you know, I think Paul calls him an angel of light. So let's take a look at that. All right, so in Genesis 1 and verse 31, And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good, and the evening and the morning were the sixth day. And now the seventh day he rested. Now some people say that the Lord created Adam on the eighth day, uh, I don't know. It depends on how you look at it and read into it. But I think by the sixth day he was done. But there, uh, you know, if somebody believes on the eighth day creation, I, I wouldn't argue with them because it's really it's not that big of a deal. And plus, um, the eighth day means a new creation. For example, um, a young boy would be circumcised on the eighth day, a new beginning. And the circumcision was the covenant that um, God gave to, I think, Abraham, if memory serves me correctly. Now, the thing is, when you look at days one through six, there's no mention of the angels being created. And if you read Job 38, um, the sons of God shouted for joy at the creation of the earth. Well, Adam didn't come until six days after the creation of the earth. So the sons of God in the Old Testament, in, in the book of Job, that shouted at the creation of the earth, um, had to be angels. I mean, it's just logical. I mean, let's face it, people. Um, the Bible doesn't say, well, on the 14th day, God created the angels. It doesn't say that. They weren't created on the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, or sixth day, not on the seventh day, not on the eighth day. So they had to have existed before. And obviously angels exist, so, you know, they, they had to have been created before the earth. Now, uh, if on day six, if everything was good, that means Satan had yet not yet fallen yet. So I believe between somewhere between the seventh day where God rested and the second or third chapter of Genesis is when Satan, God's most beautiful angel, you could read about it, well, one of his one of his most beautiful angels. I won't say the because I'm not, I, I can't you know, I can't say that for a fact, but you can read Isaiah 14 on your own the fall of Lucifer. Now, what's interesting, well, let's take a look at that real quick. All right, let's take a look at Isaiah 14 and verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. 
Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Now, let's take a look at something else. All right, let's take a look at Revelation 12 and verse 7. And there was, past tense, was. I was born in Kentucky. Doesn't mean I'm being born now. Was. And there was war in heaven. Now, people think just because it's in the book of Revelation, it's in the future. If you want to believe that, that's all right. I mean, it's not that big of a deal, but I, I think that the war in heaven was past. I think it was back in uh, the days of Adam and Eve. But that's just my opinion. And if you ask two rabbis uh, their opinion on something, you'll get three opinions, generally. Sometimes four or five. Sort of like uh, somebody was wanting a, a, a one-armed lawyer. And they're like, you want a one-armed lawyer? Why? Well, yeah, because every time I ask a lawyer, he'll say, well, on the one hand this, but on the other hand that. Yeah, I know. Don't quit my day job. Oh, wait, I'm retired. Never mind. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent. Yeah, what was talking to Eve in the garden? A serpent, right? And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Now, personally, I think that this happened sometime between chapter 2 and 3 in the book of Genesis. I think it was, you know, in time past. But uh, let's take a look at something else. All right, I couldn't remember what chapter it was. I had to look it up. Um, Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 12. It says, Son of man. Now, he's speaking to Ezekiel. Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Thou sealest up the sum full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Boy, the king of Tyrus, if he was a human, he'd had to been living a long, 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 long time. Because Ezekiel was quite a bit after, um, oh, you know, a long time after Noah's flood. And people, you know, God said 120 years was only, you know, that was going to be the lifespan after the flood for people born after the flood. You know, I mean, let's face it, if Ezekiel could have lived a thousand, well, I'm sorry, the king of Tyrus could have lived a thousand years, you know, back in the old days, but not now. So there's no way that this king of Tyrus is a human. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the barrel, and the onyx, and the jasper, and the sapphire, and the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. Listen to this. The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes, pipes, was created, I mean, I'm sorry, was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created, not born. Pipes. What kind of pipes? Wind instruments. I mean, you know, we're not talking about a bong or, uh, you know, we're not talking about smoking weed. You know, pipes. The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created, not born. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. What's a cherub? 
It's a type of angel. That covereth. Covereth what? I think he was, uh, you've seen the Ark of the, uh, uh, the Ark of the Covenant. Uh, you ever see that Raiders of the Earth Lost Ark? You know, you got the two angels' wings that are facing each other, covering the Ark. I think one of them was Lucifer. That's my opinion. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. All right, so, thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways. From the day that thou wast created, not born, from the day that thou wast created, till iniquity was found in thee. What's iniquity? Sin, evil, wickedness. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence. Violence. Wasn't there a war in heaven? Yes, absolutely. And thou hast sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Ah, because he was so beautiful, his, he was lifted up in pride. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. Remember when Jesus was transfigured and he shone like the sun? He shined like the sun. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Wow. Now, here it is. You've got this guy that was created good. And... Then he, uh, I guess the Lord decided, well, you know, I'm going to create the earth and I'm going to create uh, mankind, Adam. And you got to remember something. Adam was made in the image of God. I think it was in the book of Adam and Eve, which I'm not quoting it as scripture. I'm just throwing it out there as a possible suspect but Adam and Eve asked the devil why they hated why uh, why 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 did the devil hate them so much and cause you know trick them into sinning and he says you know it's and basically he I'm paraphrasing of course Basically, Satan said, it's your fault that I fell from heaven. And you're like, what? What are you talking about? Our fault. And basically, the story goes that, you know, God told Lucifer to serve Adam and Eve, who were made, you know, in the image of God. And Satan argued and said, no, they should be, they should worship, uh, uh, they should serve me. I'm a higher cre you know, a creature than they are. So basically, I, I don't know how true that is, but you know what? It would make sense. But basically, um, when you read Job chapter one, Satan makes a bet with the Lord. Oh yeah. You let me do whatever I want to do with Job, and he'll curse you to his, to your face, Lord God. And what did God say? Well, okay, go ahead, but you can't take his life. You can't kill him. Anything else you can do. And what happened? Well, there was a whirlwind, probably like a tornado, uh, killed his children. A fire came down from the sky armies of heathen aliens 
you know, the Lord gives Satan a certain amount of power to do all these evil things. And if he did it in the past, you had better believe he's going to be able to do it in the future. Um, so here it is. Basically, we are fighting a being on a physical and spiritual level. Most people don't even know we're in a war. I mean, you know, I was in the army. You know, I was not a great soldier. No, by no means. Um, but, uh, you know, when you're in a war and your army is full of traitors, which is what the churches are now, just full of traitors, you don't even know you're at a war, in a war and you don't even know who the enemy is. And you think you're going to win a war? No, you're going to lose. At least in the physical realm. Unless, of course, the, uh, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords has grace. But that's the situation we are in today. Did you know, now, remember when we read in Isaiah 14, verse 12, it says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? Do you know that in the NIV Bible, the 1984 edition, that was the, the original edition, and in the complete Jewish Bible, written by David Stern, a messianic believer, yeah, he's a he believes in the Messiah, but it's not who you think it is. Uh, they actually delete the word Lucifer and insert Morning Star. Now, the Bible, King James does says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? Okay. But they insert the word Morning Star. When you go to Revelation 22, Jesus identifies himself as the morning star. Did you know that? Essentially, the NIV 84 edition, 1984, and the complete Jewish Bible, supposedly Messianic, where they get rid of the name Jesus and replace it with Yeshua, so basically, in Revelation 22, you got Yeshua says he's the morning star. But then in Isaiah 14, the morning star fell from heaven as going down to the pit to be covered with worms and maggots to be destroyed. So essentially, what they did was they turned Jesus into Lucifer, the devil. Yeah. That's what they're doing. Uh, and I get people that give me grief about this. I mean, really. So let's take a look at Revelation chapter 22. All right, Revelation 22, verse 16. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. So basically, they're turning Jesus into Lucifer, the devil. I mean, really. Now, the, uh, the Paul haters, uh, they don't want you reading Paul because... Paul has a lot of information pertaining to the end times and the exposing, how to expose the Antichrist. Well, he doesn't call him the Antichrist. John calls him the Antichrist. Um, he's got several different names. In, in, um, John calls him the Beast the Antichrist, and Paul calls him the man of sin, the son of perdition. 
Same thing. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers. Sounds like church, doesn't it? For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Right? An angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. All right, Bob, what, what's up with all this? What, what are you telling us all this for? Well, didn't we read in um, Ezekiel, I think it was Isaiah, Isaiah 14, um, Satan wanted to be like the Most High God. He wanted God's job. He wanted to be the big cheese, the head honcho, you know, the boss. But, hey, sorry guys, that position's already been filled, it's not available, you know. So, he got fired from his old job, being the anointed cherub that covereth. He was cast down to the earth. And that little bet that he made with the Lord concerning Job, I think he did the same thing with Adam and Eve. You know, they were told, don't touch the tree of good and evil. And I don't know, I, I have a tough time with this, but I kind of, of the opinion that Christ is the tree of life, although there says it has 12 manners of fruits, there might actually be an actual tree of life. I'm not 100% sure, but it might be, it's probably, if there is, it's symbolic of Christ. But I believe, kind of, sort of, that the tree of good and evil was Lucifer himself. Maybe it was only symbolic. I'm not 100% sure. There's a lot of things in the Bible I just, I'll admit, I don't understand. Um, I wish I'd have stayed with the Lord when I was a middle school kid. I'd probably been a Greek scholar by now, but I'm not. I, I but no, I wanted to go live, live life and uh, have fun and, yeah, now I'm uh, ashamed of it, but uh, that's the way it goes. Now, if you want to read Job 1, where Satan makes a bet with God and says, you know, like I said, you know, uh, let me... Uh, Take everything Job has, and he'll curse you to his face. And uh, God said, okay, go ahead, but you can't kill him. You, you know, you can't touch his life. Everything else is fair game. But you know what? <laughs> Satan didn't mess with his wife. Wonderful wife, yeah. She said, curse God and die. And Job was like, oh, you foolish woman. Oh, boy. I've known people, I've, I've known wives like that. So, basically, that's where we're at today. Satan wants worship. And he wants to fight the children of God. And God is, to an extent, allowing him to do it. And you know what? That's why he leads us into sin, because the Lord withdraws his support and protection. And the church is just 
they won't teach this stuff. Why? Because they're creations of the state. They are tax exempt, IRS approved, state chartered businesses with the, the name church in it. And if you want to look it up, 501c3. 501c3. Matter of fact, you can go to your state's name uh, and then type in Department of State. For example, if you live in Texas, you can go Texas Department of State and then look up Division of Corporations or whatever they call it and then look up your church name and you'll find out it's a state chartered corporation or business, a business. And uh, do they take their marching orders from Austin, Texas? their capital or do they take their marching orders from Jesus Christ I think the answer is obvious so you're uh, you're in a war you don't even know who you're fighting and your army is full of traitors we're in big trouble people big trouble but Satan wants worship that's the thing that's why you've got all these different heresies that are going on. I mean, these Hebrew Roots people, the Noahides, the Noahide laws, and then there was another group, supposedly Christian. Uh, they call themselves Reformed, uh, the Reformed, I forget exactly what they call them, but they call themselves the Reformed. And basically, they, they're Calvinistic, which Cal, John Calvin uh, was a strong believer in election, which I believe in election, too. Uh, you know, they'll tell you that uh, the people that don't believe in election, they call themselves, uh, well, let's see, what do they call themselves? Who, well, they say, whosoever will. And the Bible does say, whosoever will. But the thing is, when you read Malachi 1, God says that he hated Esau. They asked Jesus, why do you speak in parables? Well, let's take a look at that real quick. Well, in Matthew 13, verse 10, And the disciples came and said unto him, Jesus, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He, Jesus, he answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. He didn't want everybody to know. In Malachi chapter 1, the Lord says he loved Jacob and hated Esau. Hated Esau. And the whosoever will people want you to think that, well, you know, if Esau just gave his heart to Jesus, he, he's going to be saved. And there's people that will even tell you, they're, they, they, they call them um, a doctrine, it's called ultimate reconciliation. They teach that even Satan is going to be saved one day. Yeah, they actually teach that. Uh, the Bible doesn't, but they do, you know. Sort of like the Jehovah's Witnesses where they say, well, you know, God doesn't, uh, God would never, 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 he's a good guy, and he would never, 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 never put anybody in a, the flames of hell. And then what do they do? There's three words used for hell, and they'll pick the first one that means grave. You know, really? Really? I mean, you know, so they ignore, they ignore um, where Jesus was talking about the rich man and Lazarus, where the rich man was complained that he was in the flames, you know, he was suffering in the flames. But the deal is, Satan wants worship. He wants it. He couldn't have it in heaven, so he's going to try to have it on earth. So what he tries to do is lead us astray 
And, you know, the new Bibles, some of, like I said, the new Bibles turn Jesus into Satan, Lucifer. I mean, really? And, of course, those claiming to be the you-know-whos, read Revelation chapter 2 and verse 9, if you don't know who I'm talking about. Um, they've been saying this for over 1,900 years. Oh, Jesus was a false false apostle, false, I mean, a false prophet. But the, uh, the, th the point I was trying to make was that the, um, the Reformed people, they have a thing that they call preterism. And I don't like using these theological terms because, you know, those of you that went to Bible college, oh yeah, you know, soteriology and angelology and all these ologies, whatever, it's, you know, it's, it's stupid to use big words. It's like doctors and lawyers. They use these big words so that when they charge you a hundred bucks for five minutes of their time, um, feel like, you know, they're trying to impress you. Well, they don't impress me. Unless they're an elephant and they step on me, they're, they don't impress me. But um, the point is, they, these Reformed Calvinists, the ones that I went to, preterism, they were saying that all of Matthew 24 was fulfilled in 70 AD. About the wars and rumors and war, and the Antichrist came in 70 AD, and they say that was General Titus, and the abomination of desolation, and the Antichrist has already come. There is no future Antichrist. There is no man of sin, the son of perdition. And then they'll argue and say, well, you know, Paul did say that, but we don't like Paul. Paul was a false apostle. But if you do believe Paul, they'll say, well, Paul wrote those things before 70 AD, and it was already fulfilled, and blah, blah, blah. And then when you look at Revelation, well, you know, that's all spiritual, and it really doesn't mean what it says. Uh, you know, a third of the earth dying, and, a, and then another quarter of the earth dying, and then the sea turning to blood, and the mark of the beast. That all, that all already happened. And then the, what they'll tell you is, the only thing that hasn't happened yet is Christ hasn't returned in glory. That's what we're waiting on. So, I got a question for you. Who comes next? The man of sin? The Antichrist? The beast? The, or the Lord and Savior Christ? That's a very important question. Because if the man of sin comes first, and you worship him as the Messiah, take his mark, worship his image, you're damned to hell forever. And I went, went to one of their churches about uh, not quite 20 years ago, but just, well, maybe it was tw almost 20 years ago. And I saw this instantly. And he was like, oh yeah, uh, our job is to, to have the whole world filled with God's law, and then the Holy Spirit is going to have the Lord come back when, when the church has filled the world with God's law. And that was before I even knew about the Noahide laws. And I'm like, wait a minute. Uh, you know, I started asking questions. And I realized... If everything was not fulfilled in 70 AD, then the man of sin, the son of perdition, is still to come. Who's going to come before Christ? So, you know, you've got to, that's why I've always been pushing and beating everybody on the head. If we don't, if every eye doesn't see him coming in the clouds, and we're not caught up into the air to be with him, it's the wrong Messiah. It's the wrong one. And they got a thing called Project Blue Beam, where they take uh, like lasers and stuff and they create holograms. They could do this almost virtually worldwide. 
and show the Messiah coming in the clouds, their Messiah. And they actually have a, a projection device that if you're standing right next to it, it's silent. But if you're, once you step inside the beam, it causes vibration on your, your uh, the bones by your ear, and you actually hear things. So they could actually have sight and sound of the Messiah coming, a fake Messiah. And let me tell you something. Almost, if the Muslims saw this, and the Hindus, and the Buddhists, and the Jews, and probably 98% of all the, you know, the Christians, and uh, almost 100% of the Catholics, I bet you almost 100% of them, especially if the Pope said, oh, our Messiah, our Christ has come. The world's going to eat it up. They're going to fall for it. Now, do you know why they don't like Paul? Let me read to you why they don't like Paul. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. This is why they don't like Paul. Paul exposes this. And if they say, oh, he's a false apostle, don't listen to him. Yeah, those are the people that tell you that... Uh, the morning star is Yeshua, who fell from heaven in Isaiah 14. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 15. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord, unto the coming of the Lord, shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Well, you know what? If all the dead don't rise first, that's another indication it's going to be the false Messiah. The dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. You see why they don't like Paul? This is why. This is one of the most important reasons why they don't like Paul. They don't want you to know. They want to trick you. They want you to think that the false messiah the Antichrist, the man of sin, the son of perdition, the beast. They want to trick you into worshiping him. And he's going to have the power to do miracles, people. Power to do miracles. Lying wonders. Almost everybody's going to fall for this stuff especially when they're pastors and they're rabbis and they're shamans and they're gurus all say, oh, even Christ has come. Well, guess what? That church that I went to 20 years ago, that Calvinistic uh, Reformed church, said that, oh, no, the Antichrist, oh, he came in 70 AD. We're waiting for Jesus to appear. Huh. I started asking questions. Next thing I know, I was told, uh, don't come back anymore. I wasn't being confrontational. I mean, I didn't know a fraction. Well, I, I knew a lot, but I don't didn't know then what I know now. But, you know, the Lord showed me there's something wrong with this picture. Something wrong with this jigsaw puzzle. The pieces don't fit. So there's a reason why they're, you know, all these different heresies. Preterism, believing everything was fulfilled in 70 AD, is wrong. But then again, you know, when they tell you everything is future, well, that's wrong also. Here's another example. Turn to Daniel chapter 9. I know, I covered this not too long ago, but... Let's do it real quick. Verse 19. Now, Daniel Daniel is, was one of the Lord's favorites in, in the Old Testament. The angel even said, O Daniel, greatly beloved. 
greatly beloved. Daniel 9, verse 19. Daniel speaking in prayer. O, o Lord, hear. O Lord, forgive. O Lord, hearken and do. Defer not for thine own sake. O my God, for thy city and thy people are called by thy name. And whiles I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God for the holy mountain of my God. Yea, whiles I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel. Now remember, this, this same Gabriel was the one that told Mary to call Jesus, Jesus, and to call John the Baptist, John. And what do they want to do? Oh, well, I don't like that name Jesus, they'll tell you, you know, given to him by Gabriel. So, you know, let's call him Yeshua. Yeah, Yeshua. Yeah, the guy, Yeshua, in Revelation 22, the morning star, that in uh, Isaiah 14 fell from heaven. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, follow, follow the heresy. Every time you follow the heresy back, guess where you end up? Yeah. The you-know-whos. Revelation 2 and verse 9. Look it up. Yea, whilst I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, caused, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation. Daniel 9, 22. And he informed me and talked with me and said, O Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. At the beginning of thy supplications, the commandment came forth, and I am come to show thee, for thou art greatly beloved. Thou art greatly beloved. Therefore, understand the matter and consider the vision. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression. I believe the seventy weeks were seventy years. Because that's how long the Lord said that Israel would be in captivity. Well, Judah, Judah. To finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seat up seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the Most Holy. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to rebuild Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the Messiah the Prince, shall be seven weeks and threescore and two weeks. The street shall be built again in the wall, even in troublous times. Now, what's the subject here? The Messiah, the Prince. Messiah, the Christ, the Prince of Peace. Verse 27. And he, who? The Messiah. And he shall confirm the covenant. What covenant? The everlasting covenant. The gospel, people. And he shall confirm, uh, confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even unto the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. What happened in 70 AD? The sacrifice ceased. Rome destroyed the temple. When Christ died on the cross, he said, it is finished. That was the end of the sacrifices. The veil of the temple was ripped, ripped from the top to the bottom. Do you know that every, virtually every Baptist church I've been to will tell you that this is the Antichrist? Where does it say the Antichrist? It doesn't. It's talking about the Messiah. But, but where do they get this from? Schofield. Schofield Reference Bible. And who was he? Oh, he was a wonderful guy. Cheated his uh, mother-in-law out of her life savings. 
went to prison for real estate fraud. And even when he made a lot of money, he never bothered to pay her back. He made a lot of money. His Bible was one of the biggest sellers of all time. He had tons of money. He abandoned, divorced and abandoned his wife and his two daughters. And his daughters begged him for help. And he told them, no. Matter of fact, he told one of them in a letter to pray to the saint of St. Louis. I guess that's where they lived. She lived. You know, and she, uh, when he started to be getting famous and, and uh, she showed everybody the letter, well, he didn't like that because it proved what a fraud he was. The Bible says that a, a man that doesn't su uh, uh, support his own family is deny the faith and is worse than an infidel. Schofield was a Zionist infidel. And virtually every Baptist church that I've been to, just they read his notes as if they're part of the Bible. I mean, this is the heresies that are going on. You know, and I don't claim to have it all figured out. I absolutely don't. It scares me that that for years I actually believe this garbage from going to a Baptist church. It just, it, I, I was always wondering why I couldn't understand Daniel. It's because I was listening to preachers. I'll never do that again. I always check them. And, you know, people, Satan wants worship. He has infiltrated all our colleges, our Bible colleges, our Bible cemeteries, masquerading as seminaries. He wants to be worshipped. And God the Father is going to let him have it for a little while anyways. And he's going to let people make a choice. Are you going to die for the faith? Oh, wait. Oh, no. You're not going to have to die for the faith. Pre-trib rapture, right? God would never let you do die for the faith. Just because 10 of the 12 apostles died for their faith, Stephen died for his faith, um, scores of believers, millions of believers died for their faith, but we're the end times church. You know, we're the bride of Christ. God, God's not a wife beater. Boy, I've heard that so many times. Matter of fact, uh, one of you wrote me tonight. You know who you are. Yeah, I've heard that argument a number of times. God's not a wife beater. That's right. God's not a wife beater. He's not going to be the one beating the wife. It's going to be the devil beating the wife. There's so many heresies out there. It's just unbelievable. But people, my opinion is, the man of sin, the son of perdition, the beast, the Antichrist, is going to come first. There's two Jewish groups that want to rebuild the temple, and let me tell you something. When they want to, when they want to do something, it usually gets done. I mean, let's face it, that would be the ultimate blasphemy. Them reinstituting animal sacrifice. Some people say they're already doing it. But when their Messiah shows up, virtually the whole world is going to follow him. Even though you see them, the Messiah coming in the clouds, and according to the Bible, the false prophet's going to be able to do lying wonders and miracles, even being able to bring fire down from the sky. Don't believe it. If we're not caught up in the clouds to meet him in the air, it's the wrong Messiah. Period. I know I've beaten this to death, but let's beat that horse again. You know, I know the horse is dead, but we're going to beat him again. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. I ought to know this by heart. I shouldn't even have to look this up. 
Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. All right, so what's the, what's the, what's the subject? The Lord Jesus Christ and his coming. By the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. Ah, his coming, our gathering unto him. That ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that, that, uh, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Now, those that say that everything happened in 70 AD will tell you that General Titus, or the Roman Empire, the Pope, was the man of sin, the son of perdition. Verse 4, Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he is God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. And like I've said before, General Titus was not going to tell the emperor of Rome, his father, that he was sitting in the temple of God, proclaiming himself that he's God, telling his father, Father, you got to worship me as God. That didn't happen, people. It didn't happen. But they want you to think it did. Verse 5. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things, and now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. That's another heresy. They want you to think that the Holy Spirit is taken out of the way. The Holy Spirit leaves the earth so that all hell can break loose. People, there are going to be people saved during the tribulation period. But if the Holy Spirit isn't on earth to convict people of their sin, the Holy, that's the Holy Spirit's job, to convict people of sin. Boy, I'll tell you what. When I realized what a fool I was, I was in my hotel room reading the Bible and crying. I, that's, I knew I knew what a fool I was. Uh, you know, some people have joy when they when they they have their salvation when they have their salvation experience. Not me, buddy boy. I was crying. I knew what a fool I'd been because I believed at a young age. But churches like Billy Graham and all Billy Graham, Billy Goat Graham sort of kind of drove me away. Of course, it was my fault too, but. No. The one that steps out of the way is probably Michael the archangel. He probably, you know, he he whipped Satan's butt in the war in heaven and ca and they were cast out into the earth. And he's probably just going to step aside and say, "You know what? These people want to worship the devil? No problem. Go for it." Of course, you know, God the Father will tap him on the shoulder and say, let him do it. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 8. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Well, if that happened in the past, how can this you know, did the Lord appear? Did the Lord consume with the spirit of his mouth? Destroy with the brightness of his coming? Well, if it didn't happen in the past, it's got to be future, right? Verse 9, Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, 
because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God, not the devil, for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Hey, you want to put your sin before the Lord? No problem. Like I've said before, there are churches in San Francisco that cater to sodomites, and they will absolutely positively tell you, oh, we're saved. Absolutely. God created us this way. You know, God created us to, you know, they create. he created me to be a sodomite. And they say, well, I'm not doing any wickedness. I'm in a committed relationship. You know, I, I, I married my lover right here, you know. Mark and Steve, whatever, you know. I don't think so. But uh, they'll tell you that, absolutely. And uh, they'll use the Queen James Bible. Queen James. Or the NIV. Uh, the 84 edition of the NIV. Sodomite, the word sodomite was removed. Yeah. And... Uh, you had a heck of a time proving that sodomy was a sin in the NIV, the original 1984 edition. You'd have a heck of a time. There was one verse that could have been taken either way. And uh, it's funny, uh, how did that... Let me think about this for a second. Instead of being a, pro, a sodomite, it said, uh, thou shall not be a temple prostitute. Okay. Does it mean that it's okay to be a prostitute as long as you don't do it at the temple? Or is it okay to do it at the temple as long as you're not a prostitute? I mean, and what is a temple prostitute? Is that a male? Is that a female? Um, you know, uh, up in the air. So, oh, oh, this is the point I was trying to make. The uh, it said uh, don't in the NIV it said don't be a homosexual offender. So is that a homosexual that offends, or is that somebody that offends a homosexual by telling them that sodomy is a sin? Oh, you're offending that poor uh, homosexual. You're offending him. God created him that way, and who are you to judge? This is the garbage that they're teaching nowadays. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning, because God hath from the beginning chosen you. Oh my God, election, that's a heresy. God says, whosoever will. Uh, I don't think so. Because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation. You want to know why they don't like Paul? Uh, here's another reason. Because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. We're unto... He called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I say amen to that. Amen. Um, I believe we are getting ready to enter into the time of sorrows. Now there's a seven year period, which some people say the Great Tribulation seven years. Actually, it's about three and a half years. The first three and a half years are, is called the time of sorrows. You can read about that in Matthew 24. Uh, the Lord works in cycles. Read the book of Judges. Matthew 24. I absolutely do not deny that a lot of that Matthew 24 was fulfilled in 70 AD. 
It absolutely was. Absolutely. But, you know, there's just no way that you're going to explain away the book of Revelation and tell me that all that was fulfilled in 70 AD. When people start telling me that, they're, I know they're deceived or they're deceivers. And, you know, what can I tell you? The Bible tells you a heretic after the first or second admonition, reject. You know what? I'll, I'll strive with somebody three or four times. And after that, forget about it. You can believe whatever you want to believe. If you want to believe uh, Jesus was the Lamb of God with four legs and a woolly coat and said, bah, I'll let you. No problem. No problem. Revelation 13, verse 4. And they worshipped the dragon. It's what Satan wants, right? And who is the dragon? The dragon is that old serpent called the devil and Satan. And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. Who's the beast? The Antichrist, the man of sin, the son of perdition. And they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. Blasphemies! And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. Three and a half years, people. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwelt dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. Oh, impossible. We're going to be in heaven with the pre-trib rapture. Yeah, right. How many people are going to lose their lukewarm pitiful lukewarm faith when they have to suffer for the sake of Christ and die for their faith. Well, I didn't sign up for this. My pastor told me I was going to be raptured out of here before all this would happen. You know what? Those Noahides, those, uh, those Jews, they were right. Jesus is a false prophet. And the Jews are going to go, yep, see, we told you. We've been telling you this for over 1,900 years. We're glad you finally believe us. Now all you got to do is keep those Noahide laws and you'll be a righteous Gentile. Uh, yeah, right. Verse 6, And he opened his mouth to blaspheme against God, to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. Revelation 13, 7. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. Worship who? The devil, the beast, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. Listen to this, people, carefully. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. If your lot is to go into captivity and to die for the faith, go peacefully. If they say, are you a Christian? Come with us. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. So if you, if you fight them to keep from going into captivity, well, that's how you're going to die. You pull out a gun and kill them, they're going to kill you with the same, you know, a gun. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Now, if they want to kill you because you white boy, that's one thing. But if they want to kill you because you're a Christian, come with us, Christian. You've, you, uh, you're not worshiping the beast. I mean, let's face it. 
Remember the three Hebrew children, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? They wouldn't worship uh, Nebuchadnezzar's image. They threw him in the fire. Well, we're going to be thrown in the fire too. Well, spiritually speaking, some of us. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, miracles, people, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Oh yeah, he's going to devour his enemies with fire from the heavens. Guess what? Read Job chapter 1. Satan did the same thing to Job's, um, I don't remember uh, exactly what, but he brought fire from the uh, sky and devoured some of Job's, I don't know, either his cattle or something or other. Read Job 1. Read it. I'm not making this up. Is he, uh, Elijah, Elijah did the same thing uh, for the sacrifice. That's in the book of Kings and Chronicles, I think. Kings and Chronicles. I did an hour and 40 minute study on Elijah. You know, I bet you all these people are going to think that Elijah's come, come back. And that the Messiah's come. But if you're not caught up in the heavens, if you're not caught up in the clouds, it's the wrong one. Verse 13, Revelation 13, 13, And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. Now people, what does the Bible say about not worshiping an idol or an image? Idol in the um, Old Testament, image in the Greek. Icon, that's what icon means. You ever heard of an icon on the computer? It's an image, a picture. You know, you click on a an icon on your computer screen, that's what it means. In the Old Testament, they would make an idol with their hands. And he causeth all. Oh, I'm sorry. Verse 15. Um, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. Television? that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in, to receive a mark in, in, in their right hand or in their foreheads. What do the modern Bibles say? On. Uh... Let me tell you something, people. The New Testament was written in Greek. The Greek church manuscripts say in the forehead, in the right hand. The Vatican manuscripts say on. You know the Vatican, the Pope, you know the people that burned people at the stake for daring to translate the Bible into the language of the common man? The Papists. They burned people at the stake for daring to have a Bible in their own language. What are they trying to hide? Yeah, those people. Their version of the Bible says on the right hand. The Greek New Testament says in, in. There's a big difference between in and on. You know, would you rather have a steak in your belly or on your belly? Well, filet mignon, personally, I'd, you know, I'd personally, I'd rather have it in my belly. Think about it. 
It's a big difference in and on. And that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here's wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six 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 hundred and three score and six. You know, people, I know I've beat this to death, but this is the most important stuff that you could ever learn. The most important thing in the world. Don't fall for the false messiah. Don't fall for it. And the pre-trib rapture, what does the Bible say about that? Well, in 1 Thessalonians 4.16, it says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Yeah, every secret pre-trib rapture happens with a shout, right? With the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. Sorry, not Donald. And with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Well, that's another thing. If the dead in Christ don't rise first, it's going to be the wrong Messiah. So they'll tell you, oh yeah, this is the pre-trib rapture. Well, that's Paul. But what about 1 Corinthians chapter 15? Let's read verse, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. That's right. Our flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. We, in this flesh, evil, corrupted flesh body, we can't look at the Lord face to face. We can't do it. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, at the last trump, not Donald, at the last trump. How many trumps are in the book of Revelation? Let's see, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Seven trumps. I think there's seven vials, seven trumps. When's the seventh trump? At the end of the tribulation. What? What do pre-tribbers do? They'll lie to you and tell you, well, there's another last trump before the tribulation. Well, where's that in the Bible, Pastor? Can you show me? Uh, I think you need to leave. You're trespassing. Yeah, ask them that in, in their Bible study in a room full of Bible people, students, or churchgoers. You'll be shown the door with the, the, the left foot of disfellowship. They're devil's people. They work for the devil. They honor the devil. They teach the devil's doctrines. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, at the end of the tribulation, the seventh trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. People, don't fall for it. I mean, come on, I'm not begging you for money every week, or every day, you know. It's just me. You know, I don't have a production crew. I don't have a church. It's just some guy that read the Bible a couple of times. That's all I am. I don't have a, an agenda. You know, please don't fall for whoever the world. When the world falls for this, you'll know it's false. Jesus warned us in John 15 and verse 18, If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. That's right, people. 
If the world loves their Messiah, you know it's the wrong one. You know it. So, uh, I know I've been beating this dead horse, but people, just know the false Messiah is going to come first. And then Christ is going to come in glory. Every eye is going to see him. We're going to be caught up together with him in the clouds. And I'm sorry, the uh, the false prophet was not bringing fire down from the sky, performing lying wonders and miracles in 70 AD. It didn't happen, which means it has to happen in the future. So, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the God the Father and His only begotten Son, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, amen.